With the debut of Chad Wing King, we have a newly efficient farming team. This is for you guys that want a 48 hour gold farm and three turn as consistently as possible. Now with the old teams, the debuff AOE team and the mono human AOE team, they had their flaws that are a little overlooked and they are circumvented, I guess, with the king team. The problem with the team with debuffs, that was the Shin Hendi and Gother team, is the AI likes to prioritize buffs, so there is excessive Gother rank up spam. And the only time that Gother won't spam his rank ups is when weak point is available. And weak point has a higher priority, obviously, than the buffs. So if Shin has a debuff ready and his weak point attack card, then you'll see what you get on the first turn is he will debuff AoE and then he will weak point attack. Gother also has Pumpkin Bombs, and his Pumpkin Bombs are really bad for farming. Uh, they are an AoE debuff attack, but they deal really terrible damage. Uh, the second team was Shin, East, and Hauser. This team was pretty good, but it also had the same faults as the first team with buff spam. The problem with this, however, is that it doesn't have a higher priority card than buff. So there is no weak point debuff attack like the first team. So at every chance Easton gets to buff, she's going to buff. And it doesn't matter if a buff is already down, she will buff again and again and again. So if you end up pulling a buff every turn, you're basically only using two attacks instead of three. Now, it does increase your attack, and a lot of times you might only need those two attacks instead of three, but then there are those scenarios that it isn't that great to only attack twice, and that does result in some four turn farmings. With King, we don't really have those problems. This team only has one buff attack. We'll talk about that in a, well, not a, an attack, but we'll talk about the buff in a second. King skills are two AoE attacks. So first off, that's already really good for farming. That's what we like to see. His first skill is a three X crit chance sever attack, just like Hauser's here at AoE. It's gonna crit, nothing crazy about that. His second skill is an AoE Power Strike skill. Now this is actually the first time that we've seen this on a skill attack, a normal attack I should say. Uh, the other time that this happened was with the King of Fighters collab, Terry. He had an AoE Power Strike. However, this was only on his ultimate. King has this on a normal attack card. And if you aren't familiar with Power Strike, that deals additional damage based on the enemy's resistance. That's why you see Sariel do a lot of damage. That's why you see Lolly Merlin do a lot of damage. They have Power Strike cards. With King having this on an AoE, he's literally almost wiping these on his first two attacks. As you can see here, he's going to use his crit chance attack card, but then the AoE Power Strike is always going to finish them off. What also makes King really good is his passive. Now, his passive is similar to Green Arthur's passive, but he also gets a shield, and the shield is on everybody. The shield doesn't matter too much for farming. What does matter is that everyone's going to get an attack increase and then a damage take a decrease, but that also doesn't really matter here for farming. The point is King's passive is going to increase the team's damage output. The second unit is Margaret. Margaret is super good. She has an AOE attack skill. That's sort of similar to Power Strike in a sense that it doesn't really care about how tanky they are in a certain sense. It's a charge card. It is AOE. Charge ignores defense. Her second skill, as you know, is a buff, but it's a little different from the previous buffs, so it doesn't have the same problems that the previous ones did. This is technically, in the eyes of the AI, a cleanse before a buff. Now, because it is a cleanse before a buff, AI is only going to use that when we are debuffed. Now, because we are going to be clearing each phase of any of the farming that we're going to be doing here in one go, in one turn, one set of skills, we're never going to be debuffed. So the AI is never going to prioritize using Margaret's buff attack, or buff skill, I should say, even if it's rank two, even if it's rank three. So you'll never get cocked by that. Her passive, we don't really care about. It's not going to do much here only increases her stats if she were to buff. Like I said, she's not gonna be buffing. With Hauser, Hauser is also really good because he has two AoE attack skills. He's been a pretty crucial, pretty staple unit in farming probably since launch. I think he's that old of a unit now and he's still being used a lot. His first attack is a Pierce Rate card. So his gear is gonna look slightly different from the others. We'll talk about that in a second. 
And then he has, similar to King, a Sever Attack, which deals three X crit chance. Now the fourth unit that you that we have, you'll see that in all the teams. You see him everywhere. You gotta have him. It's Death Pierce. He increases our damage output by like 30% increase in the crit damage or reduces their crit resistance, something like that. I forget what it is. But the point is, he is going to increase our damage by a good chunk. Now everyone is going to have similar gear for the most part. King is going to have attack crit damage with just attack rolls. Now if you're familiar with the farming super awakening coin video that I did, I'm literally just pulling the gear from baby wing king over to chad wing king. Now the middle and the bottom rows obviously don't matter, we're never going to get attacked, so our health and defense don't play a role here. Margaret's going to have the exact same gear, attack crit, and then her middle and bottom rows are whatever you give her. Now, Hauser's is a little differently. Just because he has a pierce rate attack, we do want to have some pierce rate rolls. Now, I didn't do anything weird with this. I didn't follow a certain formula. I literally just took a couple of anvils. I rolled them. I kept all the high pierce rate stats, and I kept all the high attack stats. And then whatever we get, that's what we get. I think I have a 6-4 attack pierce rate ratio, and... I've not had a problem with this at all. And then obviously they all need to be UR, at least the top row, so that's no question. Now the positioning, we specifically want King on the right, because the way the AI works is it prioritizes cards from, attack cards from right to left, unless we get a merge. So if Margaret was on the far left, or if Hauser was on the far left, and they got a, a merge, or if a merge can be possible, like here, emerge as possible by using one of the cards on the left so the AI will prioritize that then it will do so and it will come back to the right hand side as we saw we want King on the right because we need him to attack first so that his buff is down and the rest of our attacks will have an increase in their damage output now Margaret and Hauser their positionings doesn't it doesn't really matter at all if Margaret has a possible merge on her buff and you put her on the left you know, the AI isn't going to prioritize that, so that's not an issue. And then if Hauser's on the left, which is how I have it now, again, if it can prioritize the silver cards, it will. But it'll just come back right to King anyways. And then obviously Death Pierce is in the back. Now we have the Trio of Troublemakers Artifact set. This is going to increase damage by 5%. This is going to be a little better than just running all attack cards. So I would run this and then obviously level all this level this all the way up to five if you can. Now the food isn't necessary, but if you guys are being extremely efficient, you are farming free stages uh, two or not Tuesday, Thursday and Friday, the days before gold farming. So you'll farm like half the ingredients on Thursday and then the other half the ingredients on Friday and then make like what 1000 to 2000 gold food and then use that over the weekend you'll have a serious increase in your uh, gold income there. So if you're able to farm with gold food and using this team, I've probably been farming for about an hour now, an hour straight. I didn't obviously start recording until I saw how consistent it was at three turning. I haven't had a four turn run at all. It's been straight three turns for the past hour. So one hour has been 100% consistent. So that's that's saying a lot. If you guys do manage to farm enough gold food for a gold farming weekend, you can probably, I think somebody did the math, it was like up to 6 million gold an hour. So that's going to be absolutely insane. You could get around close to 300 mil a weekend, and that's that's pretty freaking cool. But that is going to wrap things up for this video. If you guys liked it, leave a thumbs up. Drop a sub if you're into that. Until next time.